of advanced aesthetics that you can do. So the jaw registration appointment itself or the wax ring appointment, I call it, gold standard really you're doing this after your secondary impression appointment. So you're doing it on your master casts uh, and best thing really is to have an acrylic base plate for that because one, it means you're going to have a nice stable wax rim. So you get a nice stable record. But two, it also gives you a way of then assessing those secondary impressions, uh, checking what your attention is going to be like and give you an indication of sort of success for the case that way as well. What you want to do for that appointment, two things really, you're establishing a repeatable relationship between the jaws because in complete dentures, we have no reference points. So that's in terms of the occlusion, how the teeth are going to come together and also the occlusal vertical dimension or the OVD, which is essentially the space between or the distance between the top and the bottom jaws when the teeth of the denture are meeting together. You're also looking at the aesthetics of the case, the smile line, how long the teeth are or the size of the teeth, where the midline is and how you're going to set the teeth up. So the first thing I'd sort of got six steps that I break it down into. The first thing that I always check is adjusting the lip and the cheek support. So you want to check both the upper and the lower that you've got a good labial and buckle extension. So the wax rim itself is determining where the outer surface or the facing surface of the teeth are. So the labial of the front teeth and the buckle of the posterior teeth. So you need to make sure that you're not pressing too far into the front lips, but you're also supporting the lips and the cheeks. Uh, and you also want to look at the buckle corridor, which is the space between the teeth and the cheeks when you smile. Typically in younger patients, that's wider. So it's something you might want to talk to the patient about in terms of the aesthetics that they want to get. But what's important though here is we're not, to rem or it's important to remember, we're not just replacing the teeth, we're replacing the bone and the gum tissue that's lost as well. So when the teeth have all come out, the bone is shrinking inwards. So that's why if you see someone walking around without dentures in, the face is collapsed in and collapsed upwards. So we're also looking to replace that, not just the teeth. You want to make sure it's nice and comfortable for the patient, not pressing out too much. And uh, you want to check their nasolabial fold. So just that angle there, you want it to be around 90 degrees. That means it's in a nice balanced place. And important to check with the lower lip that you're not over pressing forwards. Because if you're doing that, it means potentially that the teeth are going to be set too far forwards into the lip and it will be out of what we call the neutral zone. So in normal function, then the lip might start pulling backwards and it's going to dislodge and disrupt the denture. So you want to make sure that feels quite comfortable for the patient and the lip isn't pushing it backwards. So once you've got that set, I'm going to take out the bottom rim and I'm just going to do just the upper rim to start. And we're going to do in determining the incisal length. So how long the teeth are um, and how much tooth the patient's going to show at rest, but also uh, when they're smiling. So you do it with just the upper. The, you, what you need to think is the upper denture is there for the beauty. The lower denture is just for the function. So I've got a case here. It was actually the one we're going to share later. But this is just making an upper complete. She's got teeth on the lower, so we're not making a lower denture there. But what we're really looking at is determining how long we want the teeth to be. Uh, typically, that's around one to two millimeters at rest. Now that's going to depend on the age of the patient and also maybe personal preference. Uh, and then you want to check how the patient looks when they smile as well. Uh, and what you want to make sure is that the, you've adjusted so that the smile line is following that lower lip there so that you've got a nice even balanced sort of natural looking smile. Um, and yeah, this is the first thing that you want to do. So check that length is good enough. If you're showing too much, adjust it down. If you haven't got enough, you might want to add some more wax back on. It's one of these things when it turns up, it can be quite easy to make some adjustments too quickly, but I think it's important just to place the rim in and then adjust it from there. Um, Cause I did it a few times where I thought, oh, this looks like it's gonna be ridiculous and polish loads off or cut loads off with a wax knife or melt it off. And then you put it in the mouth and it's, it's really far, you know, far away. So you need to add more back on. So just place it in first and then adjust it. Um, but again, it's got to be something that you're happy with. You know, textbook is one to two millimeters at rest, but the patient may want more than may want less. The next one you want to check is the occlusal plane. So this is the direction that the teeth are going in or the angle that the teeth are at in terms of both side to side and front to back. So again, just check the upper one first. And we're going to use this, the Fox's biplane. So um, 
I understand that most of us have sort of Manchester Uni here. So I think speaking to a few students, they said, oh, actually, I've seen some dentures, but I've not maybe even done one. So this piece of kit you're going to use, and you've got the two sort of horseshoes here. The inner horseshoe is going to be placed up against the rim. Uh, I don't actually, well, I haven't been taking photos of patients uh, with this in, but since I've done the slides for this, I've actually decided to do it. So I had to get my nurse to demonstrate for me. So we want to check that it's a side to side is good and the front to back is good. So in terms of the side to side, we don't want a slope or a cant in the smile. So you place this up against the rim and you match it up with the pupils. So uh, my nurse here, she's pretty nicely lined up. So that's good. If it's off to one side, you need to look at adjusting one side or adding more in. Uh, and this next slide is actually the reason why I decided I'm going to take some photos of patients like this. Because when I took this photo, I thought, actually, this looks quite good. Um, so what we're checking here is the alar tragal line. So the alar, the corner of the nose, and the tragus uh, on the ear there. So actually, when I took this photo, I thought that looks quite good. But then when I came on this to draw the lines on, actually, it's slightly leaning up there. So it's not much wrong, probably five degrees or something like that. But it's something that you need to be checking there. So if this was a real patient, I think this is more that she's a little bit class three and she's pushing forwards. Um, but if this was a wax rim, you've got two options here. Either the front is too far down or the back is too far up. So if you've already done the first step of setting your smile line or your length where you're happy with, that means that you've got you know enough at the front. So you need to add a little bit of wax onto the back to prop it down. Or if you think actually maybe we've got too much showing at the front, check that again, and then you can adjust that until you're happy that it's nice and balanced. So then once you've done that, you want to move into setting the occlusion and the OVD. So you're now sort of designing how these teeth are going to come together. But as I said, you've set the top one for the beauty. So you're happy with the top one. So all you're actually doing at this stage is bringing in the lower rim and making them work together. So a little bit of a wordy one again, but you need to take your jaw relationship in a repeatable position. Because we said, if these patients have no teeth at all, they're edentulous. They've got no reference point of how their teeth are coming together or how their jaws need to work together. So a good option for this that most people use is the retruded contact position or RCP, which is sort of the most posterior position the patient can get the mandible sort of physically. So this is quite a good one um, to use because it's quite easy to get the patient to do. And um, the way that I like to get them to do it is to roll their tongue to the roof of their mouth at the back and then bite together. And it's quite useful to sort of try it yourself to know what it feels like. But if you roll the tongue back, you can usually feel quite a bit of pressure at the jaw there at the back because the muscles are pulling that into position. And it's really important that you obviously try this quite a few times because you need to make sure that it is repeatable. There are other things you can do like centric relationship. Um, but generally I do RCP for all my cases and it's fine. Um, the only time that you might not do this is if you've got a long-term denture wearer that maybe they haven't been put into RCP at first, but they have a position they're super, super comfortable with, and that position isn't compromising the function or the aesthetics. And if that's the case, then I'm going to make them in the same position again because they're comfortable with it. With these sort of long-term denture, whereas you don't necessarily want to disrupt and change it too much because it's going to potentially throw them off and make it more difficult for you. So once you're happy, you've got that repeatable position, you want to then adjust the lower height until the freeway space is suitable for the patient. So the freeway space is the difference between the OVD, the occlusal vertical dimension, so the height they are at biting, and when they're at rest. Because what you don't want is for that freeway space to be too small so they can't really feel like they're getting the teeth apart. But you also obviously don't want it too large because um, then you might end up with a really short denture somewhere. So you want to get it to typically two to four millimeters. Again, if you've got a really long term denture wear and they've been in and you know, they've been wearing a set for 20 years and they've really worn them down and they're greatly overclosed and their freeway space might be 10, 12 millimeters. If you make them a new set that's textbook at four millimeters, they're going to feel something. They've got loads and loads in their mouth. So you need to be a little bit sensible with it. But generally around two to four millimeters is, is fine. So then what you're doing is you're adjusting that lower height until you've got that. And the way that we measure it is, well, I do it anyway with the Willis bite gauge. So it's this piece of kit here. You can do it with other things like calipers or um, you're basically putting marks on the nose and the chin and you're measuring that distance. 
but this piece of kit basically does the same. So the end that my thumb is facing towards that sits under the nose and the part going backwards then sits underneath the chin. And you want to do it a couple of times. You slide that ruler up and down, but you get them in that um, occlusal vertical dimension that you check, that RCP position or whatever it is that you choose. Measure that, get them to relax, measure that, do it two or three times and just check that there's that little bit of space there. But also what I like to do is just leave the patient in this for a few minutes and just say, how does it feel? Does it feel comfortable? And then each time you've done that or you've reduced it, or once you think you're happy with it, you need to go back and recheck that occlusal plane. Because what you don't want is that you've trimmed it all down the top with the top in only it was fine. And then as soon as you put the lower in, it's, it's put a cant in it or something like that. So you need to check that and then just refine that. So the next thing you move on to then, that's all the sort of functional stuff. You move then on to more of the aesthetic planning. So there's only a few simple things that we need to look at really. The only photo that I've got is one that's already been pre-set up, but it will do. So the main lines that you want to mark on here, you've got the high smile line. So you place the rims in, you get the patient to smile and you're going to mark um, just under the lip with a wax knife, the length uh, or the position of the lip there, which is then a good reference point for your technician. The next you've got is your midline, which is going to be related to the nose and the chin. And um, you want to ensure that it's nice and vertical so that you don't get a, a little bit of a cant because if it's slightly off at an angle your technician's going to say well you know which is the reference for the middle is it the top part that's over here or is it the bottom half that's there so and this is quite tricky because if you're doing it in a your typical dental chair you're off to one side and you're leaning round so it's you know, it's very very easy to put a little leaning across usually from right to left if you're right-handed or left to right if you're left-handed uh, and then the next parts that you're checking are the canine lines. So these are representing the most buccal aspect of the canine. And you run this from the inner canthus of the eye, past the nose, and it's that vertical line that's going to determine where that is. So you mark that on each side there. So what this is doing is it's just giving your technician an idea of the position of the teeth, and it gives them a rough idea of the size of the teeth as well. Typically, everything's in proportion from these six front teeth. So then it allows them to pick a set of teeth there, but I'll cover that again a bit later on. And then once we've done all of that, we want to record that relationship because obviously all our technicians got at the moment is some models and they haven't got a clue how anything comes together. So we want to set them in that position that we've decided, that RCP position or whatever it is. And you want to stick those parts together. So that's what this is here. So this patient, we've recorded it in RCP. Uh, I like to use uh, the blue mousse like we've got here. Uh, you can also use like silicon, light body silicon. Uh, some people like to use wax, but basically you want to use something that's going to set it together. Uh, I don't like using the wax because you need to heat everything up and I just get stressed that if the patient's going to bite slightly funny, it might distort it. Um, and my technician prefers me to use something like blue mousse. So all I do, you can just about see it on this left side here, then a notch in the top and a notch in the bottom, place it over, get the patient to roll the tongue back and bite in, hold it for the 45 seconds or so, uh, and then that just sets it completely. The notches are really important, so then even if it all comes apart in um, sort of transition or anything like that, it can be clicked back together and your technician can work that out. Um, but yeah, ask your technician what they like and also what you feel more comfortable with. So. You know, we've got to bring it all together now and think, why are we, you know, why are we doing this? So they, they don't, your technician doesn't know anything apart from the models. Uh, so I do lots and lots of photos. So if you've seen any of my stuff on Instagram, there's lots of sort of cases, workflows and things like that. But it's really important to, to give them as much information as you possibly can. Um, so here you've got your canine lines, your smile lines. And, um, you know, what we're looking at is, giving the technician an idea of how they're going to start building this case. So I mentioned earlier that they're going, it's going to help determine the size of the teeth. So one way that they can do it is they can then measure between your canine lines, and that's going to give them various options for the teeth they're going to fit into this position. And then you can look at the shape of the teeth, whether they're going to be fan-shaped or oval or square or whatever it is. Um, and that might determine on the sort of age, characteristics, sex of the patient and things like that. Um, but that is more of a sort of personal preference. But, you know, your technician has got a mold guide of all these different shapes of teeth. So they're going to measure that, 
however many millimeters it is, and they'll go to the part that's you know, that many millimeters and say, right, these are my options. I've also got something for the ones that I use. So the teeth that I use are the Fenaris teeth mostly uh, by Ivoclar. So this is just a sort of example of what they've actually got. So there's various options there and it shows. So this is what your technician is looking at when they get a case like this. They're saying, this is the distance between and that's what I need to measure. So you need those canine lines, it's super important. But actually what this comes with is a little sort of caliper almost to measure the nose because that's essentially what your canine lines are. And it see it's just got a little arrow there and that just says my technician time because he's lazy. Uh, no, he's not. But that just says my technician time and saying it's going to be one of these six molds or whatever it is. So, you know, you're, you're giving them an idea of how this case is going to line up. So you start with that midline, they're going to build it in, they know where the smile line is going to be, they can check sort of the height of the teeth, show that it's going to be natural. Um, and then obviously they're using that buckle facing as well that you've done to determine the sort of the position of the teeth there. And then they're going to work together onto the occlusion of it. So the technicians will set it up sort of differently. Some will do the top first or just three to three, uh, top and bottom, and then build it back. But you know, it's you're turning that wax rim into a wax trying like that. So it's quite a simple setup. Um, we've just got a little bit of angles and things, but it's been all based on on those wax rims there. And then when you get it processed, you get some there. We've got a nice following the lip line. The occlusal plane is looking nice. Um, showing a nice amount of teeth, looks good and natural. Um, so it's just, you know, think about what your technician is going to need to turn these two plaster models into a set of, into a set of teeth. Um, so that's the sort of the simple one. I'm going to run through something a little bit more um, sort of complex now. Um, so this is a more advanced one. So this is Carol. It's actually quite a, a tricky case, this one. So she'd had a, a trauma where she'd broken her, uh, her top jaw on the left-hand side. And what that actually ended up doing was reducing the sulcus depth. So we didn't have a lot of bone to work with there. Um, but she had a pretty rough time of it. And she literally came in, she actually came to us looking, for, we were doing an advert about all on four uh, implants, teeth in a day, that kind of thing. Uh, and it was a little bit outside her, her budget. Um, but she then got referred to me um, from the implant dentist to look at denture options. So, you know, she came to me and said, look, I've had this rough time. I want to feel like myself again. So it's really important to, in that first consultation, really communicate what's the, um, you know, what does the patient want to get out of it? What are their expectations? What are their demands? And for this, I said, well, you know, if you want to feel like yourself, I go, we've got to know what you look like. So bring in some photos, uh, which she did for the next appointment, which is cool. Um, so she presented with no upper teeth at all, but she was only wearing this partial denture that you can see here. So she had, I think it was four to upper right, four to upper left five, but she was missing six and seven and everything. But her previous dentist said, I can't make a denture, it's impossible. And they didn't even attempt it. Um, she'd lost this bone. She had a, a tori, a bony protuberance in the, in the palate. And she also had a fibrous ridge at the front as well. So we had to quite a complicated impression technique for it. Uh, which I won't, I won't go into here, but yeah, it's quite a tricky case. And you can see as well, she's got quite a severe cant um, sloping across there and the midline's a little bit, a bit skewed as well. And um, yeah, we took these original photos. I always take a full face portrait when we start off and send it to my technician, Ricardo, so we can sort of get, get the ball rolling. Um, but then the next appointment when we did the primary impressions, she came in with this photo of herself here. So it's about 20 years old, uh, the Simba, whenever the original Lion King came out, that's the reference. Um, and it's not by any means a perfect smile, but it was her smile and that's what she wanted to get something near, but a little bit nicer. So we sort of had to go into what do you want to get out of it? She liked, she really liked that she had these tall, narrow central incisors, but she didn't want a diastema. Um, the upper left two there looks like it's a bridge, whether it's off the one and the three or, or just one of them, I can't really tell. Um, but she liked the pointy canines. Again, that's not a typical thing for, for women, um, but she liked it. So she wanted to try and get that back in. Uh, and she had this sort of high smile with an uneven gum line. So the uh, cervical margin, the gum margin of the threes and the ones were at the lip level, but the twos was lower. Obviously the bridge on the left side is a lot lower, um, but she wants to try and replicate that as well. 
so that was that was fun to do so as i say this was the wax rim shot that we did earlier so for something like this it's really really important to take pictures of the wax rim full face so then you've got an idea you can check your obd you can check your mid the midlines uh, you can check all the side on angles make sure that the occlusal plane is looking good uh, and moving forward now i'm going to have some with the actual bike uh, bike plane in as well but all of the lines we've drawn on there again high smile line to show where that is for reference um, because then we need to know where that is so we can put this the um, centrals and the canines there um, and then obviously the midline the canine line so we've got an idea for the size of the teeth but actually we end up needing three different sets of teeth to get the results that we wanted because the canines weren't pointy enough in the one set the laterals were too tall for the tall central teeth so we actually end up blending the three sets together to get a result something like this so um let's try and go that way so yeah so this is sort of the wax trying that we've got there so obviously we can still make some tweaks if we wanted to do but um she was really happy with this we've replicated that uh, up down up down of the gums slightly pointed canines we've twisted them forward slightly to exaggerate that a little bit because they've been brought um in front of the lateral so it's just exaggerating that sort of triangle effect there um, and she just she really liked the look of it so we went through and processed it and um she yeah got her hair and makeup done and everything changed glasses and everything it was really cool to see her sort of develop and grow in confidence through it because they showed quite a a tough time before um but she was super super happy with the result and there's our before and after there so we've made a really big change um and it was nice and stable that helps with the occlusion it was quite tricky occlusion um but if you've got you know even if you've got the best impressions in the world if you've got an occlusal problem biting in the wrong place it's going to disrupt it so it's not just about the aesthetics although this is just to sort of highlight what you can do to make something really natural and it's you know you've got to get a nice balance to it too um but she was super super pleased with this um so it's, I just want to give you an idea of sort of the cases that you can do. Obviously this has involved a lot of extra time to like just a normal denture case. It was lots of hours on Dropbox and uh, WhatsApp and talking to my technician, things like that. And we took a lot of photos to get this. So if you want to do these kind of results, the photos are super important. Um, I know it's not um, a line bleach and bond and fancy veneer cases, but yeah, this, this is my version of cosmetic dentistry and it you know, involves the same kind of um, communication and, and effort to do this. Um, so I think the summary really, remember that the upper is for beauty, the lower is for the function. So obviously if you can get the lower to look great as well, fantastic, but really work on the upper first, get that one spot on and then make the lower work with it and make sure you do all of the checkpoints so i had a, a chat with my technician on instagram last week and see the number of cases he used to get that didn't even have a midline on it you know make sure you're doing everything give them all that information and yeah communicate with your technician think what extra information could they what could they need because they they know literally nothing so you're you're designing the denture with your wax rim you know the position of the teeth where they're going to go you're telling them how long it's all going to be you know, photos are really, really, really going to help them. You know, if you're in NHS practice or something like that, then it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's all good practice. If you're in foundation training next year, two years, whenever it is, then you've got all the time in the world. So get into good habits and, you know, get slick at taking photos. Um, and yeah, because it's, it's going to make it a lot easier. And, you know, try and get to know your technician as well. You know, I, I work with one, one guy, one denture technician. He's a standalone lab. Um, when I was working in the NHS, I tried to get to know the technicians, tried to send them to only you know one guy, so I knew what I was getting, because um, that communication is really important. I have some accountability with it. Um, but yeah, I think that's all. So cheers, guys. Um, we're going to go through some questions at the end now, but if you don't want to ask it on here or anything, um, contact me on Instagram anytime. It's fine. Um, but yeah, open for some Q and A when you guys are ready.